You may have seen my YouTube video demonstrations of VHD and CED, the home video formats from the late 70s and early 80s that replayed their video from vinyl discs using a stylus. Now I mentioned at the time that this idea was nothing new as some of the earliest recordings of television are stored on 10 inch records like this one from 1927. This is one of John Logie Baird's Phonovision discs. Now if you want to know more about this subject and the early days of television including mechanical TV I thoroughly recommend paying a visit to the TV Dawn website. They've got a fascinating resource of material on this subject. But one thing you might not be aware of is that you can in your home today recreate a similar experience to those early phonovision discs with a product called vinyl video and that's what i'm going to be trying out in this video today but first to explain the origins of vinyl video i'll need to take a trip back to 1998. so at this point in history vinyl sales were pretty close to flatlining so it must have seemed like the perfect time for this chap who's an artist from Austria who specializes in the history of electronic media to present his latest project and invention vinyl video to the world it premiered in April 1998 in San Francisco and for the next few years made appearances in various galleries and installations around the world there were presentations, live events, and a place where you could try out vinyl video for yourself in an interactive exhibit. Through the use of analog compression, each vinyl video held mono audio, similar in quality to an AM radio, and low definition, low frame rate, black and white video, and it was just on a normal vinyl record that could be played on any standard record player, as long as it was a relatively decent one with a diamond stylus, but in between that record player and a television, there was a decoder box which took the analog signal that was on the record and converted it into composite or RF video output. Interestingly, as well as being an art exhibit, they did sell a small number of the vinyl video kits to the general public. And when I say a small number, I really mean it. They only sold 10 copies of each of the two sets of records they produced, and you had to buy the records to be eligible to buy the decoder to play them. The original vinyl video website is still up, but you can tell it's vintage from the fact the press packs link to videos that are available in either Real Video or Google Video and also you'll need a fast internet connection because the speeds for the stream could get up to a dizzying 225 kilobits a second. So you might want to ask for them on a DV tape instead. The last exhibition of vinyl video mentioned on the website was in 2003 in Liverpool, but since I only became aware of the existence of the format when I was researching my CED video in 2016, I was about 13 years too late, so I never got the chance to see it in action. And that would have been the end of this story if it hadn't been for the SuperSense analogue concept store and manufactory based in the heart of Vienna. This place really does look like a hipster's paradise. There's one chap based in there who's developed vinyl video into a slightly more commercial product. I mean commercial in the sense it's not just limited to a production run of 20 now. Provided you're happy to pay the money, you can get yourself a sleek new vinyl video converter box, which also doubles as a phono preamp for MM or MC cartridges. And there are also four vinyl video discs you can currently buy to play through it. Now, I was only made aware of the revival of vinyl video thanks to a viewer from the US, Randy Riddle, who'd made a video about this. He'd bought a set for himself and he contacted me and said that perhaps I should take a look at it too. So thanks to him for this. And of course, I immediately went and ordered a full set. Now, it did take a few weeks for it to arrive from Austria. And I'd imagine that these are hand assembled to order. I suspect they aren't anticipating to sell more than a few dozen in total. After all, it's an extremely niche product that's really more of an experimental art project than anything else. Now, it's exceedingly well packaged. And you can tell a lot of care and attention has gone into this. The manual can be found online. You can read it at that link there if you want to. Now, the decoder slash preamp comes with a universal power supply and that outputs 5 volts, 2 amps, to which, of course, you fit your appropriate connector for your local power sockets, but it is your know, multi-voltage. You'll also get an analog video lead that provides composite output, but remember, despite these stereo RCA plugs, the audio on a vinyl disc is mono to make room for the video, of course. The preamplifier box has three buttons, power, calibrate, and a toggle for the line or phono inputs, as well as a dial to control the video gain. Around the back, you've got HDMI out, analog AV out, line in, phono in, 
line out and power sockets. There's also a button on there to select between moving magnet or moving coil cartridges. And of course there's also a binding post for the earth or the ground at the top left there. To benefit from the full retro experience, I'm going to start off by connecting this up to a CRT and I'm going to use my trusty Sony PSF9 as the turntable. So I'll take the analog AV output from the converter box and just send the video onto the monitor. I'm going to send the sound onto some separate powered speakers. And then I'm going to plug the monitor into power, also plug the power supply into the converter box, and finally take the line input on the box and plug that into the line output on my record player. Right, so let's take a look at the records now, or should I say vinyl video discs. Now you can see this isn't a large volume operation by how carefully and neatly everything is wrapped up. There was even a handwritten thank you note in the box as well. Now these are very distinctive looking sleeves, deliberately retro look and using very thick cardstock, beautifully printed as well. Now the only artist I recognise from these is Motorhead, apologies to the other groups but my musical tastes lie elsewhere, I'm pretty sure they haven't heard of me either. But as well as these four releases from Supersense, Randy let me know that there is one more vinyl video title available which is included in this box set of LPs, it's called Cinema, but I don't have that one. So let's go back to the other ones and open one of them up and take a look. A really interesting fold-out artwork inside here, presumably containing stills from the video, as well as an explanation and an introduction to the vinyl video format itself. And then finally, here's the record. Now, it's a standard 7-inch disc played at 45 RPM, but this side is the audio-visual side, and then this just contains the single as a standard record. Now, I'd imagine if there's any dust, fingerprints, or scratches on here, it's going to cause more of a problem for the audio-visual side than it would on a standard record. So I'd better blow that bit of dust off there and just clean this record before we try playing it. Right, I'm not really interested in the single side, let's go straight to the audio-visual version. So I'm going to turn on the preamp and get the record player set into its 7-inch 45 RPM mode. You'll see the screen has come on there, that's just being generated by the preamp itself. Of course I haven't put the disc in yet, so we'll pop the disc in here and we'll press start and see what happens. Now there is a calibration process that automatically occurs at the start of each disc, but as you can see it just comes straight on and it seems to be working fine. Now I just need to play around with the brightness and the contrast a bit just to get this as good as it can possibly be, obviously it's never going to be super high res. Now this first one's in 4-3 aspect ratio but let's try a couple of the other discs. Now this one comes on in a 16-9, of course this is a 4-3 screen I'm showing you on. And the same goes for this disc as well. Now I've got to be careful playing too much of the audio from these so it doesn't hit an auto content match, but you get the idea of what the video quality is like and the audio, well it pretty much sounds like it's being played down a telephone. By pressing a combination of buttons on the decoder you can access the setup menus which let you select the output video standard between NTSC J, PAL and NTSC. And then for the analog video output you can adjust the TV aspect ratio as well as align the image and adjust the chroma. Now let's move away from the CRT and try it through the HDMI output on a standard modernish widescreen television and we'll play one of those widescreen discs on it as well. Now I know this is extremely low quality but it's still amazing to me that these videos are being played back by a standard record player stylus and that one of these discs can hold a full music video. Let's just take a quick look at some video capture. For 
funnily enough, there's some people out there watching this YouTube video in 4K and they're kind of wondering why they bothered now. But let's just take a closer look at one of these discs because if I get the light just right on it, you can see that the recording on the audio visual side just doesn't look like a standard audio record. It's got some unusual herringbone type patterns in there that just reflect the light in an unusual way. If we flip the disc over and have a look at the standard music only side, you can see the difference. It doesn't have those patterns on there. In this article about the original 1990s version of the vinyl disc, it mentions back then they got the frame rate up to 8 frames a second. Now, I'm not sure, but it feels to me like they might have slightly improved upon that for the current version of it. If you want to read more about the technical side of it, have a look at the second paragraph here, while I try and put you off by playing a brief snippet of the audio that I've captured from the audio-visual side of the disc. Now there are some people out there that would like to examine that audio in a bit more detail. So I've imported some of it into Audacity. You can see the needle drop on the left there, and then we're onto the calibration section and then into the video and audio, which is sent on the left and right channels as a series of pulses. If I just take that initial section off and zoom in here, you can look at it in a bit more detail. The sound of this reminds me a little bit of the sound that came out of the back of my High Vision Muse Laserdisc player, which then went off to be decoded into video and audio with the High Vision Muse Laserdisc decoder. So hopefully to those people that were intrigued about this, what they're seeing on screen now is telling them something about the way the audio and video are encoded, but to me it means absolutely nothing. Okay, let's just take a look inside the box now, see what's going on in here. Now, it's held together with six very tight screws in the base, as well as two security type screws in the top. But once all those are removed, the insides slide out easily. Now, that outer casing on there really is quite a thick, heavy piece of bent steel. It really does make the whole thing feel quite substantial. There's much less circuitry in here than I was expecting, and it's very neatly laid out. You'll notice a familiar logo at the top right there. Yes, it's using a Raspberry Pi, a Model A+, to be precise, to do the video decoding and output. It makes sense in a low-volume operation. Use something that's ready-made rather than getting a custom-made board done that you'd probably have to buy in batches of a 1,000 from China. You can see how it's attached via USB to the Fono preamp and how the HDMI out and AV output line up with the back panel. Now there's very little else I can tell you about this other than I'd imagine that Fono preamp board is custom made. After all, how many preamps have a USB hanging off the side? And you can see how it all lines up neatly with the back plate and the various wires and connectors going off to that front panel where the potentiometer is in the middle for the video gain control. And uh, I suppose there's a few people that would like to know what was on that micro SD card that's in that Raspberry Pi. So I have just uh, took a couple of screenshots of that. You'll be able to pause these and just have a look at this in a little bit more detail. So that's what's on the card. And then if I just look first off at that readme, uh, that's what that says. And then if you also want to have a look at the build instructions, that's on screen now. I think you'd probably be able to read that if you were looking at this in 4K, but that's all I've got for that. So we'll just put it back together. Now there's just one last thing I need to test. I haven't tried the preamp section on the vinyl video box. I've just used it with the line input so far. So I swapped out my existing preamp that's in my hi-fi with the vinyl video one, moved it into its moving coil position because that's the kind of cartridge I've got on my turntable. And it sounded pretty much the same as the other one. I couldn't really tell any difference at all between them. Of course, if you are just going to use it as a preamp, it's quite an expensive one. And of course, despite the fact that this record player is better at audio reproduction than the other one, when it comes to vinyl video, that doesn't really make any difference. The video quality is much the same. One thing you can do to make it look better is stand further away from the screen. And I'm not being negative there, it's just the fact that with a smaller image, you don't tend to notice those horizontal lines as much. I just wish there were a few more titles available on this format though. So there you go, that was Vinyl Video, definitely one of the most unusual current day products that I've covered for a while, but in a world where it feels like every new piece of technology is just an ever so slightly upgraded and more expensive version of last year's device, it's refreshing to see something unusual or even crazy every once in a while. 
yes, this isn't a mass market product, but it's those tech tinkerers, the outliers, the oddballs who are the ones that keep things interesting for me and who spark my imagination. This is a channel that celebrates the unusual and I'm more than happy to leave things like smartphone reviews for everyone else to cover. If you want to learn more about vinyl video, there are links aplenty in the video description text box, and if you're feeling generous, you can always support me on Patreon. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.